A car-free future, well, that's one uh, mission, isn't it? Or vision, I should say. Um, these are a few facts around cars as today. Uh, in Stockholm, every household is expected to have 1.4 cars. And these cars are used less than 5% of the time. And each one of them actually have four to five parking slots if you collect it all together. So all in all, it's very poor use of uh, resources. And I think that is something that we cannot afford in a sustainable future. So we wanted to dig deeper into that. And uh, me, myself, I'm a designer. I've been practicing design. I've been professor in industrial design. And now I'm doing research around design and sustainability, how to combine the two. I, <laughs> I forgot to mention, because I think this is an interesting project. It's the One Ton Life. And it was a kind of future study where they looked into is it possible for a family as today to live with a carbon footprint that is sustainable? Uh, and that's great, and we love the, those kind of living labs. But then again, the car is a very strong norm. So this family that's supposed to be a normal one, uh, of course they do have a car that still fulfills uh, these things. So we wanted to look more into that is it possible to live without a car and what would that be like and how would it feel? So we staged this uh, living lab called A Car Free Year. And um, uh, so just to try it out, what would it be like and what would we as a society, society uh, earn if uh, making the, this kind of change? So the plot was that we had three families and we sh selected families with kids because that is where you get the most friction. And then we kidnapped the car from these families and uh, studied them over one year to see how uh, they, uh, what, what was the upsides and downsides of not owning a car. Uh, the project was divided in two sides, so we had the car-free year, and that was this study uh, where we looked at the families, and the other one was the more design phase, so based on the insights from this uh, study, we uh, they did design concepts, and I will get back to those. <coughs> The study in itself was, uh, we did mo both quantitative data, so we tracked the, uh, the families, how they moved around and with what kind of transport, uh, but more focus on the qualitative side. So every month we had interviews with these families to see uh, what we found there. And here you will see uh, some of one of the families and a little bit of their experiences. Du var ju mer skeptisk från början. Ja. Det var ju min idé. Ja, eller ja. Jag kom från det. Ja. Det var det. Ja, men jag trodde att det skulle vara svårt. Mm. Eh, intressant, men svårt. Och jag trodde det skulle vara ofta som det blev ett problem. Men jag har ju också, som vi pratade om uppväxten, jag har ju vuxit upp på, på en gård och liksom ganska långt från kom. Så jag tror jag hade mer av en medärvd. Alltså man är van att man tar bil eh, ofta. Vi har ju velat bli av med våra bil i många år. Vi har ju mest använt bilen för att åka till sommarstugan. Kanske mer du i och för sig. Så. Ah, okay. Kanske mer jag som har velat bli av med bilen i många år. <laughs> Nej, men vi använder bilen ganska lite. Vi använder den för att åka till sommarstugan. Vi använder den när vi är liksom hos kompisar och äter middag. Och den blir sent och sådär. Men sen är det klart att när bilen står nedanför på gatan. Då blir det att man använder den. So it was very exciting to work with real people, real family in real setting. Uh, we get loads of input uh, from this and to try to sort that out, we cluster these into different segments and I will share a few of them with you. One of the insights was around these cargo bikes. They were highly appreciated by the family because they substituted uh, a lot of the functions that you used to have with a car. You could drive your kids in them, you could go shopping with them and so on. Uh, and that was the good side. The, the kids also appreciated it. It was great fun. Even after the full year, they still appreciated going with this cargo bike. 
on the downside, you can find that it takes a lot of space. You feel a bit um, bumpy when you get on the uh, cycling path. Uh, and if you're in traffic, y you will uh, feel threatened by the cars and everything. Another straw, uh, or to get the, the puzzle of life to work, uh, 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 when having kids, you drive them to the sports activities and all kinds of things, and that was also uh, a hustle. So the families had to, to have, use um, public transport, and also to allow the children to go via public transport. Uh, and here we also find another strong norm that kids don't go alone in public transport if they are of a younger kind. Uh, so that is something that we addressed. But from our family's experiences, the parents gained a lot of time uh, and the kids grow with the responsibility of going by themselves. So they learn to know the city and so on. There, so there was, again, a lot of upsides. Another thing was regarding transportation. And the family experienced that uh, there's a lot of people that want to uh, deliver stuff to your doorstep. Uh, that was not a problem. They had the matkasse and all those kind of things. Uh, but on the other side, to get rid of things, uh, you were still depending on the car. So that was another hassle that we found. So the researchers that did this study, they collected all or, or, or digested it and put it into this workbook. Uh, where they had the findings from the study, and that was handed over to the design office that we work with. So to take it into the design phase, we collaborated with Propeller Design, and they uh, brought these forward to some design concepts. And uh, we collaborated with the families also in this process. So this shows a workshop where the families are looking at the concepts that the design agency has uh, created and gave feedback to them and so on. So just a glimpse into these uh, concepts that we have. Uh, one thing that uh, the families experienced is that they were excited about these cargo bikes, but uh, they wouldn't have bought one of their own. So they hired these from us. So making these more available uh, would be a great step. And that could be made by having, you could rent one, or uh, your workplace may provide them as an opportunity uh, where it's uh, drawn from your salary. Uh, to address the strong norm that kids don't go alone in public transport, you could make a, a seat that is assigned for children in the bus, uh, for instance. And that is not only welcoming the children, but it's also sending a strong signal to the um, other uh, people around. Uh, and regarding delivery, uh, you could see that you could build this into the system. So having the trucks that deliver goods to your doorstep, they could take the, the garbage or something that you need to recycle and bring it back uh, again to, to close this loop, kind of. And um, we... Um, this is another one to actually reward those who go by bike. So today, uh, when you get into the city with car, you charge uh, something, but you could think of being rewarded if you come by bike. And uh, maybe not cash, but rather it's some kind of credits that you can change for other services uh, that, the, that is associated with um, a car-free life. So we also thought about making all these efforts into one umbrella organization uh, that could be from uh, run by the by <laughs> no, not the government maybe but the the city or something like that uh, to make it like a strong effort and that again gives a, a strong gesture on uh, we want to and need to move in this direction. Here are some other concepts, uh, bike repair on the go, uh, ve uh, velostradas, uh, very well uh, marked out paths, better bike lanes, better signage. Again, th the signage is both for you to find your way, uh, but it's also to... Um, uh, again, welcome those who go by back, that they feel appreciated and they feel taken care about. 
another thing was that going by bike may uh, allow you to take a more pleasant ride to work. Uh, so an app that would direct you towards the, the most beautiful way to get to work rather than the shortest or the fastest. Also having the cars going back to different sport activities and so on to synchronize that and allow parents to bring the kids on, um, on public transport. And here's yet another concept for uh, normalizing kids going with public transport. So this is Barnwagen where you have uh, one of the cars in the subway is uh, dedicated for uh, kids. Uh, so these were a few glimpses, and uh, we have collected all this in the website. So if you want to dig more into it, you can find it on our website. And uh, you, we also have these films uh, available there. So uh, if we're looking back at the car-free year and what uh, we learned from that is that the families experienced that they needed this gentle push. Uh, they have been thinking about uh, selling their car and so on, but they haven't uh, gotten there by themselves. So our project in this case uh, was that gentle push. And once they were on the other side uh, and car-free, they really appreciated it. They found that they gained a lot from being car-free and that it wasn't that hard. So we think of... Um, the car is a very strong norm and it kind of holds us back as a society, you could say. And also, the car is usually uh, advertised with something associated with freedom, but uh, you, you tend to forget the, the, the th struggles that you have with your car. So, uh, the families also uh, found that not having a car uh, presented a lot of freedom. So that was the car-free year, and could we think of a car-free future? Well, a car-free future may be quite a big leap, but, but I think we need to reduce the number of cars, and that could lead to a lot of positive effects. So we will have more space uh, that is today occupied by the cars. We will have less noise, uh, obviously and also more time. The families experience that they get more time with not having a car than having one. And of course, uh, it would make it possible for us to create a sustainable future. So this image shows when we present the material to the politician in Stockholm city and uh, to try to push, give them a gentle push into moving in this direction. And uh, yeah, I will finish off with yet another film clip, and that is Roland Elander, his head of sustainability at uh, Sustainable Innovation. Sustainable Innovation is another research institute that we collaborated with uh, during this project. I think that we have set up barriers or expectations about what is so difficult to live sustainable. And I don't think that's true. I think it's much easier det är roligare, jag tror vi kan behålla vår livskvalitet eh, samtidigt som vi i vissa aspekter är hälsa, motion eh, och också luftkvalitet, buller. Hur faktiskt vacker en stad kan vara utan nedsmutsad biltrafik och trängsel. Sammantaget finns det mycket att vinna på om fler väljer ett bilfritt liv. Och dessutom behövs en sån förändring om vi ska nå målen vi tillsammans har satt upp. Det blir en stor utmaning, men vi människor är bra på utmaningar om vi bara får den rätta motivationen och känner att vi blir bekräftade i våra val. Det måste fungera. Det kommer att fungera. Så häng med! Here you can find more information and uh, the Swedish Energy Agency is the one who has been funding this project. Thank you very much. <laughs>